How would you feel if you found out that your favorite TikTok creator was murdered in cold blood? Or what if they got exposed for being a creep? Or what if they were a murderer? Well today, these questions are going to become a reality as we cover TikTok's most disturbing users. Welcome back to another video. This is actually a pretty momentous occasion because um, this is actually my 100th video on this channel. So, uh, you know, round of applause, I think. You know, thank you all for sticking with me and thanks for almost 15k subs. Like, we're almost there already. We're almost at 20, like, bro, 20k is on the way. But yeah, without further ado, let's just get straight into the first case Jin Kid. Ali Abu Laban, known online as Jin Kid, was a TikToker who had over 940,000 followers. He made a name for himself by impersonating characters from different movies, but was mainly known for his impression of Tony Montana from Scarface. Ali had a wife, Anna Abu Laban, and a five year old daughter. His wife would even sometimes make appearances in in his TikToks as well as having her own account with 60,000 followers at the time. Eventually, Ali would become obsessive over Anna, lashing out at her over simple things like staying out with friends. Talk to me, bitch. You taking away my whole life? I got a top secret clearance, you trying to f*** it up? F f talk to me. I'll bring you to San Diego for what, so you can run to your friends? F You're not even an American citizen, I brought you to this goddamn country. Name one man that would do that shit for you, bitch. Women. Anna's friends would even notice Ali's behavior shift and claim that Anna was even trying to get a divorce during that time. On Ali's Instagram, he would go live and proceed to in front of thousands of people. In the days that led up to the incident, Ali's wife would kick him out of the apartment and he would temporarily stay at a hotel which was nearby. He would begin drinking more and more, even filming himself drinking while driving. He had a secret spare key to the apartment though, so he would end up sneaking into the apartment and installing a listening device onto his daughter's iPad before trashing the apartment and then leaving. A few days later, on October 26, 2021, he would hear his wife giggling and talking with another man through the spyware he had installed. Not thinking straight, he instantly assumed that his wife was cheating on him. He would speed to the apartment, screaming and crying on the way there, and once he arrived at the apartment, he would shoot 29-year-old Rayburn Cardenas three times before shooting his wife once in the head. They both died at the scene. Ali would then leave to pick up his daughter from school before confessing to his daughter, mother, and later the police that he had just killed his wife. He would be arrested while speeding down a freeway with his daughter in the car. He would plead not guilty to all charges and is still awaiting sentencing. The Buddy. Buddy Haynes, known online as The Buddy, was a TikTok creator who would upload bad boy videos to TikTok. Now this was back in 2018, which was the peak of cringe talk videos on YouTube. So obviously Buddy's videos would make several appearances in several videos by some large creators. This would obviously boost his TikTok followers to over 25,000. But instead of using his large following on the platform for good, he would, well... You sure you want to do this, little girl? I mean, what if, what if we're dangerous? He would post multiple of these types of videos and they would almost always feature girls who looked underage. And keep in mind that Buddy was 26 at the time. On October 2nd, 2018, a TikTok user named Bithoji would upload a video talking about Buddy and had this to say. I understand that calling someone a is a big allegation. I have multiple sources of multiple 14 year old girls that have come forward to me and to Adam about their situations with Buddy. One poor kid. 15 years old, got a pick from Buddy. I have that if anyone wants to see it. And I mean, these aren't just loose accusations from her. There are multiple screenshots that back these claims up. Oh, how old are you? 14. I mean, may I be honest? Yeah, of course. If it was me, I'd try to make the relationship with you last for years. Lol. I feel like I look stupid. You're okay. Don't worry about it. I kind of sort of have a crush on you and shouldn't. Like, why? I don't know. Sorry. Just feel ugly and unwanted. No girls find me cute or anything. I'm sorry. Am I that ugly? Ugly? I feel like it. Can you please delete that screenshot? I will. So yeah, he's also a pick me apparently. Honestly, I always think nobody cares for me. I do. Thanks. Sent you something on snap. Oops. May I be honest? Yeah, sure. Haha. <laughs> I sent those videos because I'm sort of turned on and wanted to tease you. And the videos in question were just him doing, well, this. Think about this tone. However, according to Buddy, this was all fake and he was actually being hacked by the original girl who exposed him, Bithoji, which, you know, makes perfect sense. I'm flattered that he thinks I'm smart enough to hack into someone's iCloud and I'm honored that he thinks I'm smart enough to know how to hack into someone's Instagram and send fake DMs. I would not make something up to this extent just to make someone look bad. 
After this, Buddy would go on to turn off his TikTok comments before privating and abandoning the TikTok account altogether. He would eventually return to the internet and would make a video in response to the criticism. So I'm back. There is no stopping me. There is no stopping the storm, the fire that is the bidet. For those that like me or follow me just to spread hate, to try to get me off this app, you realize you're wasting your time. Best thing for you to do is just to block and not follow. Because the less followers I get, the less more I want to be on. The more followers I get, the more I love to be on here. It is just to piss you off. But like a moth to a flame, he would get exposed for talking to minors again. Cute. I was gonna say, don't have to cover up for me. You're cute. I'd love to get to know you more. Wish I was there, haha. I'd want you. You're beautiful. I kinda like you. You'd be a good girl. 16, right? Those girls that I did duets with, yes, I did duets. They asked for those duets, first off. It was not meant to be or anything. They weren't supposed to come off that way. The FBI has already investigated me. They what? came to my house oh. back in 2018 that when all this, Bro. when all that happened. They were just asking me what like stuff about TikTok and what it was. He would respond yet again on his Instagram story saying that all the allegations were false and quote, all bull. A little over a week after he would say the allegations were false, he would get exposed again by someone named Jadica. And here is where I was like, well, you know, I'm not really all that experienced in flirting. And he said that I can practice on him. And then that's when he said really about me saying, oh, I'm not that experienced in flirting, you know. And then here I told him that I was bored and he said he could make it better. And then I asked him what he meant by that. And he said, oh, well, I'd probably make out with you. Ha ha. Um, and then he also said he would cuddle me, which I am. And I don't remember why, but at some point he said this and I was like, um, Okay, well, what do you mean by that? And he said, don't need you falling for me. Three months after that happened, a YouTuber named Activist Plug would catfish Buddy for three months saying that he was a 17-year-old girl in hopes of exposing Buddy. Buddy would play it smarter this time, as he would keep the conversations platonic the whole time, but Activist still convinced Buddy to meet up at a park, which would lead to this video. What you up to? I'm just hanging out. Just hanging out? Yep. Not meeting a friend? No. Not meeting somebody? No. Yeah. No, I don't know anybody. I'm hanging out. So you don't know anyone by the name of Cat? No, I don't know anybody named Cat. You weren't meeting anyone here by six? No. You sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. He would abandon TikTok and move to streaming on Twitch and rapping on SoundCloud, and I don't know which of the two are worse. Wake up in the morning, sipping on my haters tears, feasting on the doubts and banging the fears. Gotta get ready to get the spread as you talk sh your girl's giving me he would go radio silent for one and a half years before uploading a video to youtube called campfire chat clearing the air where he would essentially give us a life update my intent was not to be cringy or flirting or anything like that with anyone in any of the videos if that came off that way that's on me i dealt with a lot of depression anxiety schizophrenia alcohol abuse i'm staying away from tiktok as much as you people ask me to go back i'm staying away from it i have stopped drinking completely i'm back on my medicine i'm in therapy i'm getting the help that i need now is he telling the truth we don't know but all i know is that buddy will definitely go down as one of the strangest tiktok anomalies i've ever encountered john tay and eric john tay Colliers and Eric Dodds, both 23, were a TikTok couple who made names for themselves due to their strong LGBT fan base having over 800,000 followers. They would post vlog type content to their shared TikTok account and all seemed well for the couple. But on August 10th, 2022, John Tay would be arrested after being raided by the police for the murder of 29 year old Dakota Bradshaw. According to the report, witnesses in the vicinity claimed they saw a red truck and a blue Dodge Challenger speeding away from Bradshaw's home at the time of the shooting. When police arrived at the scene, they found Bradshaw shot inside of his home. He was pronounced dead after being taken to the local hospital. A few days after John Tay's arrest, Eric would record and post a video to their TikTok account claiming John Tay's innocence. What's up, y'all? It's Eric. I promise y'all an update. And here it is. So, for the past couple days in the media, I've been seeing, like, a lot of things about John and 
Y'all are concerned about John. Is he okay? Has he harmed someone? Like, has he did anything to someone? No, he has not done anything to no one. Y'all know John. John will not harm a soul. My baby will be home soon. He has not harmed a soul. He even started a GoFundMe to raise money for Jonte's defense. Ironically, Eric would be arrested on the 16th, only six days after Jonte's arrest. They have both been charged with felony murder and are currently awaiting sentencing. Kalisha Williams. Kalisha Williams was a 16-year-old girl who would post videos of herself and sometimes her friends dancing to popular TikTok sounds and posting it to her account. In December 2020, she would be invited to a holiday party that would be taking place at an Airbnb with, quote, just a couple friends from school. Her parents were skeptical at first, but eventually agreed to letting her go, even talking to the mother who chaperoned the party, saying that she would be present at all times. Kalisha was on the fence about going to the party, though, but her stepdad managed to convince her to go, saying that it would be good to socialize, as this was during the whole pandemic situation, and she had been cooped inside her home for a few months. She would eventually agree to go to the party, but this would end up being the worst mistake of her life. The party didn't even take place at an Airbnb, instead taking place at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. And at 12.02 a.m., Kalisha would be in her room alone recording a TikTok before someone entered her hotel room unannounced. This obviously startled her, and she would be confronted by the man who entered the room with a gun before getting fatally shot. Nobody would hear the gunshots due to the party going on, but around 20 minutes later, two men would enter the hotel room and find her lifeless body. They carried her to an elevator and called the police. While all this was happening though, Kalisha's parents reached out to the chaperone to check in on Kalisha, but were lied to saying that she was fine and only found out the truth over eight hours after her death. And the truth was there wasn't even a chaperone there. It was only a group of teens who wanted to party. The murderer was 16 year old Kerry Brown, who was apparently her boyfriend at the time. He was arrested and charged with assault, felony murder, aggravated assault, reckless conduct, and possession of a pistol while underage. He was only sentenced to one year in prison since he was charged as a minor. Mahek Bukhari Mahek Bukhari was a 22-year-old TikTok star who amassed almost 130,000 followers. She would post trend-related videos as well as makeup videos or just her with friends or her mom. Most videos were normal except for one that stood out, where she joked about confessing a murder to her partner. Her followers probably didn't think much of it at the time, but this would actually foreshadow an event that would happen only one month after the video. In February 2022, Mehek Bukhari, her mom Ansreen Bukhari, and a 21-year-old woman named Natasha Akhtar would be involved in a car chase between them and Shakib Hussein and Hashim Ijazuddin. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong because I probably did. They were chasing the two 21-year-old cousins due to Shakib having an affair with Ansreen, who was 25 years older than him, and he threatened to send nude pictures of her to her husband and son when she ended the relationship. During the chase, another car driven by Rekhan Karwan would get involved and would end up ramming the cousin's car off the road, resulting in them crashing, killing them both instantly. The case is still ongoing and it's kinda crazy how sometimes you really do just jinx the future. Johnny Elbows Now most of you probably already know about this guy, but Johnny Elbows was a TikToker who found success in having his friend record him just doing weird stuff. And his so-called friend wasn't even his friend. He was just exploiting Johnny's weird build and condition for TikTok clout. And you probably know him from this video. Or this video. There it is. Daddy's twerking. He's twerking up a storm. Or this video. Oh, he's in the gritty. He's hitting the gritty, everybody. These videos would go viral on TikTok and Instagram Reels, which would lead to him amassing a huge TikTok fan base. He would go live regularly on his TikTok account, going outside, talking to people, and talking to his chat. But during one TikTok live stream, Johnny and his friends were getting harassed by a group of kids, so they decided to head to a park nearby. Once they arrived at the park, Johnny would get harassed again by two girls, and Johnny he would say this to one of them. All right, they're leaving. I'm sorry. I apologize about this, everybody. Sure that girl in the short, she keeps man. looking at me. Don't pay them no attention, man. If you don't give them any attention, they won't bother you. You know she what I mean? Left, no, John. What? What? Uh, no, dude. No, dude. No, not her. Not her butt. Her shorts. No, dude. No, man. No, dude. Once he said this, his online presence absolutely plummeted, which would lead to him making a very, very, very bad apology video. I'm pretty on myself. Hello, everybody from TikTok. I'm sorry, everybody, everybody in this whole planet. I'm not on TikTok anymore. And the officer I talked to, FBI or something, and the 
in jail for a while. It's confusing sometimes. It is confusing. And when you guys see this, I'm sorry. This was obviously not received well, so he began losing a ton of followers, which would lead to him completely deleting the TikTok account. And even his so-called friend doesn't work with him anymore. Currently, Johnny is completely off all social medias. Nobody knows where he is, and we don't know if he'll ever return. Yandere Freak Marie Ann Oliver Snow, known online as Yandere Freak, was a TikToker who made a name for themselves by cosplaying as different video game characters and anime characters, but was best known for cosplaying as Junko from Danganronpa. Marie, who goes by they, them, had made quite a name for themselves, not only in the cosplay community, but TikTok as a whole, amassing over 1.6 million followers at the time of the incident. On January 17th, 2021, Helen Hastings, a friend of Marie's, would stay the night at their house. They had met each other in high school, but their friendship would flourish through both their loves of anime and cosplay. Anyways, on that night, they were watching the movie Gotham, eating food, smoking, drinking, and having fun, until Marie would pull out a gun and began playing with it. It would pass it around like it was a toy, aiming it at objects in the room and at each other, until eventually Helen would say to Marie, shoot me, to which they would respond, okay, and shot them. Marie was in shock and claimed that they thought the gun was empty and didn't remember ever loading it, as well as saying that maybe they were too drunk to notice. Helen would go on life support for two days before passing on January 19th, 2021. They were only 18 years old. Marie had posted some disturbing content on their socials in the past, such as TikToks where they would pretend to harm themselves and posting a video lip syncing to a song that says goodness you're bleeding what a wonderful feeling you're down in your pleading my head is just reeling they would be charged with manslaughter but got out on a bond of twenty thousand dollars hopefully you guys enjoyed this video again thank you guys so much for sticking with me um this is the hundredth video on my channel which is insane follow me on all my socials you know thanks for watching to the end if you if you're still watching this just know that i, I love you like but uh yeah see ya